I mean, I, I could have done, you know, the, the questions that you had. I've done audio recordings for people, but, you know, okay. do I do a video thing? That's totally fine, too. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, <laughs> you are doing this for us. You're really helping us oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, worry, no worries at all. What time is it over there? Eight in the morning. <laughs> Oof, that's early. It is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you all look fabulous, so don't worry about it. It's 11 o'clock here. I will go to bed after this is over. So um, where do you want to start? You want me to like just start going down the, the list of questions? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Uh, and by the way, how did you find me? Just the internet the, in general, uh, Netflix, anything? Netflix. In I saw the Netflix documentary. Uh, everybody yeah. did. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was fun to shoot. And by the way, if you if you guys want to go off script and and you have other questions that aren't on the list, feel free to ask. Perfect. perfect. All right. Yes. All right. Let's get to it. Uh, how did you become a flat earther? Do you have any prior? Did you have any prior knowledge about the flat earth community? Uh, no. Let's let's answer the second second question first, which is no. I had no idea what I was doing back in 2014. I I got into Flat Earth because I was bored with conspiracies. You know, over over here in America, we got the best conspiracies. Yeah. <laughs> For whatever reason, all the coolest uh, conspiracies, with the exception of the, the 1561 Nuremberg Germany event, we're, we'll get into later maybe. Um, so I had an opinion on just about every one of them. And when every Everybody in the conspiracy world, in fact, everybody knows about Flat Earth. Everybody's heard about it. I've never asked a single person. It's like, hey, you know anything about Flat Earth? It's like, no, I've never heard about it. Everybody knows. And everybody hates it. Loathes it. I hated it too. You watch the documentary, you know that part of the story. And which is, I tried to shut it down over a weekend because I wasn't getting any younger. It's like, yeah, you know what? Let's take a look at this thing. And I kept pulling on threads and pulling on threads. And it just got worse and worse and worse and worse to where nine months later, the beginning of 2015, I said, you know what? The internet hive mind's pretty smart, pretty intelligent. They don't miss much. So I'm going to make a series of videos. I, I had no idea what I was doing. Never edited a video before in my life. Never narrated anything, never did anything. And I sat down and I, I did some of my best writing in terms of clarity. I mean, I just wrote and wrote and wrote, never erased a single thing and put it out there. It took me a whole day to do the first video and then I repeated that. I did the first uh, seven clues in eight days and then just did a few more after that. And I thought for sure some academic was gonna shut me down and they didn't. Uh, in fact, I had calls from all walks of life. Um, military people, air traffic controllers, pilots, engineers, anybody that had to, was tied to transportation got a hold of me and they said, yeah, you know what? Not that crazy. Here's why. And stuff they didn't talk about in the documentary. I have a huge list of subject matter uh, people on YouTube, on my playlist channel. And they were great. I mean, the first guy that came out was a, a United States Navy missile system instructor. He was in for 10 years. And he uh, he said, yeah, we're targeting things way beyond what we should be. So anyway, that's, that's how I got into it. Cool? Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Uh, how is it to be part of the flat earth community? Uh, it is really great and really awkward at the same time <laughs> because you're part of the flat earth community. Everybody's first impression is the same. It really parallels what you people think of flat earth. It's like, what do you think of flat earth? You, you know, asking people that have never heard about it. It's like, <laughs> only idiots believe in flat earth. And which means you're an idiot and you, you get that a lot. But at the same time, the journey that everyone goes through by the time they get through it, again, every, the t-shirt literally reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to disprove it. Nobody loves flat earth. Everybody hates it. I, in fact, I was more stubborn than most. It took me nine months. Most people can, can get through the concept in about two to three weeks because there's so much more content out there now. Uh, oh yeah. By the way, the, uh, the flat earth society, um, uh, the Flyers community. The, in fact, I was so desperate. I'll show you guys. Probably aren't going to be able to see it real well on camera, but that is an actual Flat Earth Society membership card out of uh, Hong Kong. Uh, because I, I didn't know anything. It's like, well, there's got to be a Flat Earth Society out there, and I actually paid my twenty bucks or whatever it was, and they sent me a laminated card and a couple things. 
and uh, I realized that they didn't really do anything. This this group, we have nothing to do with this at all. Everybody in the conference, everybody that was tied to the documentary, um, if if Flat Earth was software, we would be 2.0, and the and the old society would be 1.0. So we have nothing to do with them. Um, sorry. Uh, so yeah, back to the being in the Flat Earth community. It's it's tough because you you will alienate friends and family and coworkers. Guaranteed. I mean, I have seen marriages get destroyed. I've seen friendships break up. I've seen families get in fights. Um, mostly because when you get into the community, it's this weird snap. You know, it's like you, you, you don't believe you don't believe. And then you're all in for some reason. You just, you just, the, the, the scales flip over and you get so excited that you want to tell people, <laughs> which is a dumb idea. And I've told like the holidays are coming up here. And I, every holiday year, I tell people, yeah, don't go to the Thanksgiving table and start telling your family this. Don't do it. And they, they do. They want to. It's like they sit down. It's like, oh, what are you into? Hey, what is it? You know, you might as well be telling them that uh, you're, uh, that you're a, a, a drug addict, gay drug addict, <laughs> racist, all these bad things. I mean, well, not bad things. Gay, hey, all God's children. I'm not judging. But you could tell them all these things and it would be less than flat earth. Less than, than flat earth. Flat earth just people look at you like you're mental because it's the conditioning it's it's so strong so that's that and again you, can, you guys can do follow-up questions after this just remember them uh question number three uh and i don't know who wrote all these but they're good questions are the flat earth members learning new things or are they mainly confirming their ideas and expectations no are you kidding we we learn new things all the time it's tougher now after five years than it was in the first three but we're learning new tricks every chance we get. In fact, I sent you a playlist called, sent to you, Hannah, um, called Experiments Playlist. Yeah. You can look through that. Some of those experiments are two or three years old. Some of them are less than a year old. So, I mean, you, you know, we started out because we didn't know what we were doing right off the bat. The first thing we started doing tests on was long distance, long distance photography, which they didn't show in the documentary. They couldn't. They didn't want to. Remember, the, the director of that film hated us by the end. Oh. <laughs> hated us. Because, well, because he, he absolutely would not cave in, which actually worked out well in our favor because the, the film was balanced. It was like flat earth, flat earth, astronaut, flat earth, flat earth, psychiatrist, <laughs> flat earth, flat earth, some sort of scientist. Uh, and so and I sat in studio audiences, you know, quietly with a hat and, you know, sunglasses and watch these people and people like for the first 20 30 minutes didn't even believe it was real they thought it was a piece of docufiction and in fact there was um one editor out of los angeles he was convinced before somebody told him that everybody in that film were, was actors they, they were all just playing a part and it's like no no everything was real um where was i going with this oh yeah new expectations um, so yeah, check out that playlist. There's some wonderful stuff on there. Uh, even with the first video, we, we started, oh, oh, sorry. We didn't know what we were doing. So long distance photography in the beginning. Uh, then we followed it with lasers and then we followed it with mirrors and daylight. Uh, then we did moon temperature tests. Oh, that just blew my mind. The first time I saw that, um, I was into flat earth like oh, a year and a half before I saw that. Uh, so yeah, tons and tons of stuff. Uh, but, but most of it, the, the top five things we use real fast. Uh, and I won't go in, in, into detail unless you want to go into later. Uh, long distance, long distance photography, far and away the the biggest proof uh, for us. Followed by gravity versus the vacuum of space, which is stronger. Third would be, what's the third one? Oh, the eclipse shadow is too small, meaning uh, the moon is two thousand miles wide, but the eclipse when it goes across the ground is only seventy miles wide. Nobody wants to touch that. Uh, the moon temperature is cold. Meaning moonlight generates a cold light, a cold laser light. And again, if you guys are interested in this, ask me as, after we're done with this. And five, the Van Allen radiation belts, uh, are they deadly? Yes or no? It's a simple question, but physicists have a really, really tough time with it. And I threw those to a PhD out of Georgetown down uh, over here on the East Coast, and he folded. Didn't even want to touch it. He's like, yeah, we're done. We're not, we're not going to debate. I've yet to run into a PhD who will debate me. I put the challenge out there for years now and they, they will not touch me. Um, question number four. 
Could you please explain how gravity works? Oh, yes. Uh, and could you explain what we may see at the tip of the Earth or edge of the Earth? Okay, let's do the gravity thing first. Which is, even mainstream scientists, you can ask any mainstream professor and they will say, they can't tell you what gravity is. They can only tell you what it does. They can only tell you the symptoms of gravity. Meaning, you know, you, you drop something, you know, it falls, right? well what is it what makes it what makes it do that and it's like well it falls it's like yeah but what is it and the mainstream science will say well it's a magical molecular force that pulls things down to the core of the earth well it's really the same as we say we say it's a magical molecular force that pulls things straight down the only difference is we say it gets pulled down to some sort of flat disc you know some sort of snow globe and they say it gets pulled down to the center of a sphere and it's like, well, where are you getting that from? It's all because mass, you know, the whole bunch of mass. That's where it's, it's, it's like, really, have you ever duplicated this? No. Gravity has never been replicated in any experiment ever. Uh, we, we don't have that sort of technology, or if we do, the military is not going not gonna to show it to us. Um, but yeah, any scientist, throw it at them. Seriously, say, what, how, what, what is gravity? And they say, um, yeah, <laughs> they won't answer. <laughs> um, and could you explain what we may see at the tip of the earth, the edge of the earth? Uh, let's dispel some rumors right away. The edge of Antarctica, you know, the, the coastline of Antarctica is not the edge of the earth. It's not some cosmic waterfall. The, the, it's not from the movie Thor. If you guys saw any of the movie you know, Thor, it's not Asgard. Well, hey, actually, Asgard's your neck of the woods, isn't it? Um, you know, isn't that part of your myth and legend, the whole Asgard thing? It is. <laughs> pretty, pretty close. Yeah, Thor did us no favors whatsoever. It's not this flying disc in space with a cosmic waterfall. So what we say is that this place is, you're basically living in a building. No different than what you're sitting in right now. It's got floors and walls and a ceiling. And it's really, really, really big. Super big. As a matter of fact, so big that we, even our best and brightest, didn't figure it out until about almost 1960. And when they did, they, you know, they decided, you know what, civilization has already basically matured. We can't tell anybody this, so they decide to keep it under wraps, for lack of a better term. That would be the United States and the Soviet Union. They figured it out basically between 56 and 60. You know, they, they mapped out what, what basically it looked like. They were looking for the edge for the better part of 30 years. They went down there in 1928 and flew uh, military reconnaissance missions. And it's not, it's not a secret. They just flew around Antarctica for 30 years looking for something. Never told anybody why. And then when they found it, after Operation Deep Freeze in 1955-56, they locked it down. The Antarctic Treaty is bulletproof. People don't even know. It's the, the quietest treaty. It's the un only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties. And it literally says no corporation from any country can set up shop there ever for all time. And it's not even up for review until 2041. No one wants to talk about it. It's blue. And not only that, but you're not even allowed to protest it. Meaning, let's say you're you're the head of a giant oil company like British Petro Petroleum or something something on your side of the, the pond. Uh, you're not even allowed to run full page ads in your newspaper saying how great it would be to start digging up Antarctica. And people say, oh, it's for environmental reasons. Like, no, no, no. This treaty was put in place before environmentalism was even a word. Environmentalism is just this kind, nice, glossy finish. They can put up, it's like environmentalists. What are you protecting exactly? There's no animal life. There's no plant life. There's no ruins. There's no ancient indigenous people. It's just ice and snow. What are you protecting exactly? You know, anyway. Uh, let's see, what else? Is there? Do you know how long people have believed that the earth is flat? Yes. As a matter of fact, you could type this in. Um, I won't send you the link. You can just type this in. Go into any search engine and type in ancient cosmologies and just hit images and you will see this barrage and you know what maybe i'll send you the compilation anyway hang on <laughs> one second i'll make it i'm gonna make it easy for you guys thank you so much one <laughs> sec let's do because i did a speech last year and in fact i was in your neck of the woods i was in uh, i did the i opened the gather festival last year in uh, stockholm oh really 
Yeah, go figure. They brought me over. I completely unsolicited. I had no idea. So what's the Gather Festival? And I get over there, and and I they basically interviewed me for an hour on stage, and that was the opening. People were just staring at me like I didn't see. <laughs> Because it wasn't a conspiracy, you know, the Gather Festival is not a conspiracy festival. So here, what I'll do is I'll send you, send this to Hannah right now. And we'll, we'll call it the uh, Ancient Cosmology. And we'll attach it. Yeah, this one right here. And what you'll see is just about every culture in the world drew the same thing. And it is right, and they're all listed here. Everyone: Greek, Navajo, Babylonian, Mesa, uh, Japanese, Persian, Viking, Indian, Mayan. Blah 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 blah. Every, if you can think of them, they 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 did they drew the same thing. It's basically, everybody drew that we were living in a snow globe. Why wouldn't they? You know, it, you know, the Earth is flat because they couldn't you know couldn't see a curve anyway, which we'll get to. And um, the stars moved. So if the stars move and it looks like they're moving some sort of arc, well, it's got to be a dome. And that's what they drew. They, they just drew this snow globe. It's really weird that every, again, if you look at this, this image, this is a collage. They all drew the exact same thing. Well, it's like, it's like, well, they didn't know. Really? Didn't they know? Because 500 years later, you know, 500 years ago, then they came up with this whole globe thing. We'll get into that. Uh, let's see. So yeah, for, for basically if our unbroken history goes, sorry to answer your question, if our unbroken history goes back only 5,000 years, right? Even though we know full well, there's cultures that are way, way older than that, but we don't like to talk. Science does not like to talk about them. You know, the, the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, the Bosnian pyramids, Bimini road, uh, the real pyramids. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, um, Puma Punku. The, you know some of the places in the hills in Iran. I mean, there's just so many things. The there are cultures that have existed before ours. Definitely, we are not the first people to rent this apartment. But for your question, we believed uh, every culture believed in the the world was in some sort of enclosed world for at least 4,500 years, and then that changed 500 years ago with Pythagoras and and um, oh wow Copernicus. Um, let's see here. Could explain uh, who is the founder of the flat earth community why it's me no it's not i have no i have no idea who, who founded it the original flat earth community who knows no no idea who who founded the the first flat earth community i will take credit for some of the early work but i wasn't the earliest there were guys doing it in the middle of 2014 um they weren't gaining a lot of traction though because they didn't make it simple and you got to remember the general public out there you guys i'm sure are straight up geniuses <laughs> but the general public out there are mostly mouth-breathing troglodytes. <laughs> yeah, they just don't know. I mean, we are taught, and especially in the American school system, again, your academia system must be just stellar compared to ours because we teach people almost nothing about physics or engineering or chemistry or microbiology or even the political system that we're in right now. You'll see that once the election happens here in about 50 days. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's gonna be so much fun <laughs> you guys are gonna have to watch it seriously get a big bowl of popcorn and a glass of wine and just just laugh at the americans because we are going down oh it's awful um anyway where was i going with this um oh yeah so the flat, flat earth the flat earth community no the, the flat earth has always been out there but what i did I'm, i will take credit for this i'm not the president i'm not the king i'm not some grand poobah i don't care what the documentary says i consider myself they they want to paint me as like the mayor of flat earth whatever i'm the freshman recruiter that's all i do i get you in the door and then you find people that are more advanced than me i made something that was so easy to understand though that people gravitated towards it for lack of a better term uh which is this the solar system can't exist on its own right you know it the the, the world as a globe it, it it's not a standalone thing meaning it requires a solar system around that and a galaxy around that and you know a big universe around that and huge amounts of math trigonometry and and um calculus and quantum mechanics and blah 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 and then you get into dark matter well the flat earth, if it's just this flat and close thing, it barely needs algebra and geometry. Honestly, it's simple. It's very, very simple. And you're saying, well, simple doesn't mean it's right. No, 
It doesn't, but it also, but it does mean that it resonates with people. There's an old book, uh, an Asian book called The Art of War. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. Um, there's a saying in there that is, people are like water. They always take the path of least resistance. It's an elegant way of saying that people are lazy. <laughs> And they are. People are notoriously lazy. And so, I mean, they don't do research. They don't do their, you know, they look at something and a pick, if it's simple enough for them to understand, it's like, yeah, I get it. I get it. So the reason why, the, the, again, why the Flat Earth has resonated so well is because we created, partially me, but other people, we created a way to describe the world that is way, way easier to understand than a solar system. It's as simple as that. And people like easy, you know, people don't ex, try to explain a light year to somebody can't be done. I mean, you, you we have to come break it down to seconds. Do you, do you like, you know, do you know how many miles are in a light minute? Like 720 million. How does that number apply to anything? And that's just a minute. Forget about a year. The, that's it's incomprehensible to most people. Anyway, so where are we going with this? Uh, can you tell us? why we may see a curve of the earth when we're on an airplane <laughs> <laughs> do you now okay so this is where I, I, well, I sent you a link in advance i don't usually do this but i sent you something called tyson curve mm -hmm. and in it you gotta remember there's very few scientists that are media friendly most scientists we, when you get your master's degree in a physical science or higher whatever reason you lose vocabulary i don't know why that is but they're like monosyllable which is why you can't put them on television so there's only three to, um three physicists that even do any work really in television one's neil degrasse tyson the the most popular physicist in the world which everybody hates um brian cox from uk and michio kaku from japan those, those three guys I sent you a link to Neil Tyson. Now, you guys remember, I know you're probably not old enough to remember because you're, what, 16 years old? You're old <laughs> enough to remember the um, uh, the Red Bull jump from some, some years ago, a couple years ago, the Red Bull jump. Does that mean anything to you? Yeah. So, somebody, somebody write that down or remember it whatever yeah. the, the the Red Bull jump. You'll like this. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the team from Red Bull took a big capsule put a balloon on it it wasn't a rocket and they sent a guy up to about 130,000 feet gave him a parachute and he jumped yeah. but before he jumped they took a lot of photographs mm -hmm. and it showed this severe curve a ridiculous amount of curve mm -hmm. like he was in space right and I've talked to producers I'm going why did you print that and it's like well it's a good shot I go but it's a lie <laughs> it's 130,000 feet even if you could see the curve it would be just so amazingly gradual I, I could show you videos at 120,000 feet no curve at all which so Neil Tyson was on stage during this performance at some festival and he said he was actually picking on Red Bull he said that it was scientifically dishonest it's like holy smokes which is the clip I sent you guys where he said that um at 130,000 feet, he goes, there is no way you could see any curvature at all. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a problem, isn't it? Because I've had a whole bunch of people tell me, I mean, I get this question all the time. It's like, oh yeah, I've seen the curve from an airplane. Really? Because the world's most popular scientist says that you can't even see it from four times that height, mm -hmm. which should be way more severe. So did you actually see it from an airplane? In fact, I put the challenge out literally four years ago. I said, you think you saw it from an airplane. Get an airplane sometime. It's not trying to, you know, ruffle any feathers here. Take a picture from your window. Uh, put that image on some sort of laptop, whatever you want, you know, and hold a straight edge up to it. Tell me if that curve's still there. If it is, send me the image. I will quit Flat Earth tomorrow. <laughs> you, know how many pitch, you, you know how many images I've gotten? Zero. <laughs> and here's why. It is straight. You guys know who, or you, you're probably not, do you, are you old enough to remember who George Orwell is? You heard that name? Okay, it's a book called 1984. Heard of that book? Kind of, maybe? No? Okay, it's a dystopian future book that was written, oh my God, in the 40s after World War II. And it's about, it was set in 1984 about how everything was going to be weird. And there's like Big Brother and cameras everywhere and every, all the information was going to be controlled. Glad none of that happened. But anyway, the what he was saying was that you could convince people of things. So what what he there was a there was a famous thing in there. It was called the five lights four lights scenario, 
which is it's straight up interrogation techniques, which is you sit somebody in a chair, you know, if you're interrogating them and you put four lights up above. And every time you say, how many lights are there? You say four and you just start beating on them. Say, no, there's five lights. After a while, do you know what happens? They start seeing five lights because the brain wants to escape the pain. They want to believe it after a while because it's like, you know, the, you know, people say, oh, I see five lights. Like, no, no, I, you've got to convince me. And people actually start do seeing five lights. So what does that have to do with anything? It's not that you see the curvature. It's that you want to see the curvature. You are told this. You are told the curvature is there since you were six years old. You have seen the globe in your, I don't know if you have globes in your classroom. We have them over here. Like in every single classroom is a freaking globe, right? Which is weird in itself. And every movie, what you start watching, if you if you do enough of this, you start watching movies, you'll see globes in the background for no apparent reason whatsoever. It's like, why does that detective office have a globe? Why does that doctor's office have a globe? Why is that amazingly rich person have this cheap globe on top of something? Everybody's got a freaking globe. So the point is, is that you want to see the curve. Uh, I have talked to pilots. They have all, in fact, the pilots have a tough time because out of the front of the plane, that's absolutely flat. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt. They see, it's like, oh yeah, it's absolutely flat, but they have a problem with it because they are told there, there, there's a curve. We all brought up with a curve. So there you go. So you yeah, watch that video if you get a chance. But, you know, if you, again, if anyone that comes at you and says, oh, I can see that. I've had people say they could see a curve from a mountain, from a beach, you know, literally at the water level. It's like, fine, show them that video. And then tell me, is Neil wrong? the most popular scientist in the world tell me he's wrong because he'd probably have a problem with that <laughs> um can you explain how you view the earth example some people believe that the north pole is at the center of the earth and that antarctica is at the edge almost everybody believes that in the uh the flyers community so there's two schools of thought you probably saw them in the documentary it's basically the un flag you can look it up if, if you want. It's not hard. The UN flag, the USGS, uh, it's called the Azimuthal Equidistant Map. Uh, A-Z-I-M-U-T-H-A-L, Equidistant. And uh, the Flat Earth Map, they're all identical. In fact, if you look at the UN flag, it's really spooky because the UN flag has, you know, the, the North Pole's at the center and all the continents are splayed out. But do you know what's missing in the UN flag? Anybody? No. <laughs> Antarctica. It's not there. The entire continent is gone. It is not on the UN flag. And so, well, they probably couldn't, come on, couldn't fit it on there. There's tons of flags. There's tons of different things you could put Antarctica on, but it was left out deliberately. And But instead, in place of Antarctica, they've got this giant spiky wreath around the entire edge. It's, it's brilliant. So most of the community believes that, yes, uh, the North Pole is at the center, the continents are splayed out, and Antarctica stretches around all sides. And, the, the, and Antarctica is actually much, much bigger. So in most of our maps, you see Antarctica is like that wide, which would be two or 3,000 miles. It's probably much, much deeper than that. So from the coastline of Antarctica to the outer barrier, wherever the wall is, oh God, it could be, could be 5,000, could be 10,000 miles don't know because the military is not gonna not gonna give that up so that's what we think it is and but the the difference between the majority and the mono, minority of flat earthers is some of them it basically we, we kind of we agree on the layout but there's some people that don't like the dome idea for some reason some people don't like being fenced in so they, it's like you know they don't like the whole confinement idea you know that, that we're in some sort of dome so they, they don't, but it's okay. You know, we, same people go to the conferences and, and we agree to disagree. Everybody agrees on one thing and that is it's absolutely not a globe. Okay. What do you think about NASA and their science and discoveries? <laughs> 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 you got it. Well, you know what surprises me? Cause when I, when I, when I get to tour around and go to other countries, it always surprises me. The meeting has been upgraded to the blah, 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 whatever. The, um, you know what surprises me is how many people outside of the United States be just believe whatever the Americans do. It's like the Americans put it on television. Everybody believes it. It's like, do not trust the Americans. We lie about everything. Oh my God. I don't think we've told the truth about anything we've done since 
since about the 1800s nothing and, and if it's on the news there's ulterior motives so okay and so i sent you an image did you did you get my image yeah we yeah. saw the image okay so that's just let me pull that up real quick or you can pull that up you don't have to share screen because i've got it over here but that's just a random shot from apollo 12 right taken in 1969 and there's tons and tons of shots like this and this is what I mean by this, this kind of we'll, we'll kill two birds with one stone here, which is what do I think about NASA? Well, I think that the stuff they put out back in the 60s has aged really badly. Um, when it comes to special effects, come on, we, we can do stuff way, way better than they could. But unfortunately, you can't change history in this regard. So you're looking at this image. Uh, Okay, I will pick the top three things that you can't, there's no way you're going to get around them, all right? And the reason why NASA get away with these things is because, remember, we do not teach people about physics or engineering or chemistry. Ready? All right. Uh, the sun. If there's only one light source, and you can go outside and check this, if there's only one light source, the shadows travel in how many directions? Yeah, that's a problem here because the shadows are moving in four directions. The only way that gets is even remotely possible is if the light source is really, really close. Well, the light source is supposedly 93 million miles away. And that light source right there looks like it's about 30 yards away. That's a studio light. And the hot spot is literally right behind the astronaut that's taking, taking the shot. Nobody, no physicist wants to touch it. They, there's nothing they can do. They are stuck with that one. I mean, that is a big one. But again, the average person doesn't get it because unless you're into photography, you don't know. We take things for granted. It's like go out to a park. All the shadows are going in one direction. That's how light works. And you show someone like this, like, wow, it's really cool on the moon. I won't even touch the fact that the entire background is black and there's no stars whatsoever, even though there's no atmosphere. I will completely disregard that because people are going to just say it's exposure settings. Right? I was like, well, it's camera exposure settings going, really? Because they took a lot of photographs. And you're telling me not one of those rolls of film, you didn't change the exposure setting to pick up the stars. No one was interested. And you know full well why they didn't show stars, right? Do you guys know this? Why do you think? Think about this. If you show stars, you've got a problem. Remember, stars move. And there's a time date stamp at the bottom of all these images. Well, if the belt of Orion is in the wrong place at the wrong time, some nerd in his underwear at 3 a.m. is going to find it. And they're going to go, hey, it shouldn't be there. It's just too hard. It was way too hard to calculate. And they said, somebody said, you know what? Just no stars. No stars. It's going to be way too hard. And so, and it worked. People are like, oh, it's exposure setting. Okay. So shadows. That's the first one. Second one. You see all those footprints everywhere? Yeah. Footprints, footprints. There's footprints all over this thing, right? Because it's this light, ashy, uniform surface of everything. Mm -hmm. That's great and all, but there's something missing. What is it? Well, if you look under that lander that looks like it was made by a homeless person <laughs> and that giant <laughs> rocket nozzle, there's no splay pattern. There's no blast pattern. What the hell happened? How did you land that thing without moving an inch of ash anywhere? There shouldn't be ash under that thing at all. Mm -hmm. The thing should have just blown everything sideways. That's how rockets work. It's like it was just set there. Really, really weird. No one wants to touch it. Uh, oh, that also, by the way, how you get this uniform, by the way, it's one of the little things, a uh, uniform coat of ash everywhere. Nobody ever took a shovel and dug down to see how deep it was. It's like, how, how deep is the ash anyway? It just seems to be this wonderful, perfect layer of ash. Uh, third thing, let's do engineering. See that pretty satellite dish in the middle? Yeah, okay, that satellite dish is a VHF transmitter. It is not secret technology. It is not special technology. It's a VHF transmitter from 1969. It uses a car battery, right? <laughs> that thing has a range of maybe 50 miles Morse code if you're lucky. And supposedly, it was transmitting 10 frames of color video a second and perfect two-way communication with no distortion whatsoever over a quarter million miles through the Van Allen radiation belts. No. Not a chance in hell. There, are, no, 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 no. And by the way, how did they even line it up? That's analog. That's back in the day. If you want to tell me that if we, I can drive ten miles from here and lose most of my cell phone signal. 
And you're telling me that thing had perfect, not only just per, you know, perfect communication, but also it was beaming color frames of video a second with, with no distortion whatsoever? No, no. Oh, God, it's so horrible. Uh, other little things, let's just throw a couple other things out there. Remember, uh, if you look up, supposedly the moon is one-sixth Earth gravity, right? And which means a 180-pound man is going to weigh how many? 30 pounds. Right. So, so, you know, imagine you weighing one sixth what, what you weigh now. And yet everybody's moving in slow motion. Why the hell are you moving in slow motion? If anything, you'd be moving in fast motion. You would have super strength, super speed. Yeah. There'd be nothing you're doing. All these guys are kind of floating around in slow. Why? Why are you floating? <laughs> you weigh 30 pounds. It's not like you weigh nothing. You know, it's like it's like great. All they did was slow down the uh, the camera speed by by half. That's all they did. I could go on the pressure suit. It doesn't make any sense. The backpack. How does that stop the vacuum of space? Literally that capsule looked like if you zoom in, it looks like it was made by a homeless person yeah. who, who was also making meth inside it. It's terrible. <laughs> and this is just, and this is the photographs. The photographs are actually pretty compared to the video. The video is even worse. It's just terrible, 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 awful stuff. Uh, so no, NASA, NASA and their discoveries. Uh, no, they they had to militarize space. They 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 basically commandeered this thing almost immediately right after they did the first atomic tests, uh, the, the upper tests when they were trying to break out of this place. And the private sector got into it recently. You know, SpaceX, um, Blue Horizon, and uh, Virgin Galactic. And just perfect, you know, I, I'd like to, I mean, I could spend an entire hour just picking on um, SpaceX. Remember that Tesla, the Roadster in space, that convertible in space? Uh -huh. Yeah, it was brilliant. Absolutely freaking brilliant. Uh, there's no rocket footage of exactly how it got there. Uh, the car would have been shredded by the physics. I mean, the, the tires would have blown up. All the pressurized systems would have blown up. Everything would have warped. The glass would have spider webbed. It would have been absolutely shredded. And it was absolutely perfect with three HD cameras spinning around, spinning around, wonderful. And yet, and then it was like, oh, we're going to send it to Mars. And the second they, they were even thinking about leaving orbit, they just turned off the transmission for no apparent reason. Uh, not only that, but it's like, why aren't you using the flagship? You know, the S model, the four-door sedan, you could have sold, I mean, the advertising that never happened afterwards, they never ran a car commercial using that. Uh, the the, the four-door sedan, my God, it could have paid for itself. Even the mannequin, you know what also bugged me about that? Was there was no logos anywhere. I mean, we're talking Tesla and SpaceX, private company and a public company, and there were no logos anywhere in that car. That thing should have been wall-to-wall -wall endorsements. Well, it's America. We do marketing. We market the hell out of everything, and uh, it, it, we never ever saw it. As Mac, you could the, even the mannequin that was sitting in the car didn't have any didn't have any logos on them, whatsoever. I mean, my God, you could have gone to Disney and gotten uh, a stormtrooper, Boba Fett, Iron Man, and Groot, put in those four seats, and it would have paid for itself. Disney would have paid all the money, and oh my God, the the mission would have paid for itself. Nope. Nope, nobody wanted to do anything. There was no follow-up. Nobody, Chevy in space, Ford in space, Jaguar in space, Porsche in space. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, Norway doesn't have a car. I'm thinking of Sweden. That's right. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Uh, let's see here. Ba -ba -ba. Do you believe that the other planets are flat or round? Neither. I don't think they're even there. I think they're just uh, pretty images on a, on a screen on the ceiling. When you go to, do you guys have planetariums there? Any, like any, where you walk, you know what a planetarium is? You walk in and you can see the moon and stars and it's like, this is what space looks like. You guys got any well, we stuff? have them in our city. Not in uh, our city. might have it in Oslo or something. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, you actually might have one in Oslo. Um, that's what we're talking about here. So when people say, well, they flat around, I say, okay, when you go to a planetarium, because we have them here, because, you know, space, go team. <laughs> NASA is great. Um, it's like, can you see the moon of Jupiter? Yes. Can you see our moon? Yes. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because it's just this image on the ceiling. So are they flat around? They look spherical, but they're not. They're just, they're, remember, everything in the sky to us is just a giant elaborate clock system. That's all it, uh, it is that predates language. 
That's all it is. You don't need you don't even need language or numbers or anything like that. It you know because that's all it is. The stars were used to track you know everything from crop rotations to when eclipses were, the the seasons, the whole nine yards, and that's all they are. It's just a giant or, ornamental clock. That's all it is. And by the way, I'm not wiping out um, astrology when I say that because people say, "Oh, you're killing astrology." You know the whole zodiac. It's like no, no. I'm just saying that they aren't billions of miles away i'm just saying they're they're here it's it's a much more intimate thing i'm not saying that you know if you're a double gemini with a bad moon rising hey great <laughs> it's fine it doesn't change anything <laughs> good for you uh let's see here if you get an invitation to visit our space would you uh yes of course i would uh, as a matter of fact, however, in fact, that's been put out there by a whole bunch of people, different uh, companies and different groups. It's like, oh, yeah, we gotta get Mark Sargent into space. And it's never, ever gonna happen. Here's why uh, space, at least in the United States, uh, I can't really speak for that many other countries, is still military. It's all military. All the astronauts are Air Force, and they're actually high ranking members. I mean, they're usually colonels or higher, full bird colonels or higher in the military. So if they went to try to take me into space, the first thing they would do is put a disclaimer, a non-disclosure in front of me saying, yeah, by the way, you can't, you aren't allowed to say anything. Um, the rules for military are different than the rules for uh, civilians. And so they wouldn't let me say anything. However, the follow-up question to that, which is, um, are, is there anything that, that, that could be done to convince me? I'm sure you know you that's that's how you got that question anything that i that can happen to convince me that the earth is actually a globe by the way we don't we don't say round uh because you know a dinner table a dinner plate is round you know a table is round we say ball or sphere or globe is there anything that can convince me that it was a globe sure two things first would be put a camera on a rocket capsule of a rocket point it down at the launch pad do not hit stop do not hit edit do not hit anything transmit let that sucker go up and eventually the earth will form into a globe as it leaves earth right which is why the tesla thing would have been brilliant to show that i find it interesting that no not that that footage does not exist in any space program it's never happened no rocket has ever launched with the with the camera pointing down or any camera point at, at that sort of angle where the earth forms into a globe as it's leaving orbit it's never ever happened statistically that's impossible oh yeah by the way also look up no astronaut has ever uh taken footage where they've taken the camera and done a 360. you know you think you do that at least once accidentally especially on the moon you turn into a 360 and you know turn come all the way back around no you can't because you're gonna you're gonna run into the fourth wall uh so that'd be the first thing if but there's a there's a there's a smaller version of that uh if you don't if no one wants to you know put a camera on a rocket which they're not going to do uh loan me a spacesuit i did a video called uh the lost nail a couple of years ago where i basically said the spacesuit is absolutely impossible the way it is now the only way a spacesuit could work could work if it was made out of metal or heavy plastics and it's not. In fact, the early spacesuits from NASA were metal and heavy plastics, but they realized they were way too clunky and on, they couldn't be done. I mean, it's like, oh my God, how are they going to climb up ladders and get into a capsule? It's, it's impossible to use. And then somebody came up with a brilliant idea, whoever it was, and said, you know, no, no, we'll use soft suits, you know, with bendable arms and legs. It'll be, it'll be like basically you're wearing a, a giant winter coat and we'll just put it on television. People will buy it because they don't know physics. The spacesuit cannot work. I don't, it, whatever, you know, cause like in that picture I just sent you, right? There's these backpacks. They're not tethered to anything. There's just backpacks. Well, tell me what's in that backpack that keeps that spacesuit from exploding. Meaning, I don't care about the oxygen or CO2 scrubbers, the heating or the cooling or whatever else. I care about what stops the vacuum because it is a law of thermodynamics. It's not a guideline. It's not a rule. It's a law which says pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier which I will, will round out the questions with this and I'll throw this at you guys, which is so pressure cannot exist in non-pressure without a barrier. Then I could send you some wonderful, in fact, you know what? I'll send you one more video, which is da, 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 one second. It's going to be um, vacuum versus steel rail car. One second. You'll like this. It's super short. It's only like 18 seconds. 
fact, if you can watch, well, maybe you could watch it while I'm with you. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, one sec. Steel rail car. This is something science does not like. So the Germans, for whatever reason, they take these steel rail cars, not aluminum, they apply a vacuum field to the inside of them. And instantly, it's not like the movies, instantly the cr car just implodes. It just gets crushed. Well, that's a problem. It's not like the movies. You know, the movies, it's like, oh, we have a hole in our spaceship. Get the duct tape. We only have two minutes of air left. And they're running around. It's like, no, no, you have no time. You have a fraction of a second. And then that's it. It's over. All the air in the room, all the air in your lungs, you're dead. It's over. The movie, the movie roll credits. Well, here's the thing. So let's say there's a second floor above you right now. Right? And you, you turn into a vacuum chamber. You have a valve. You pop that valve. What happens? The air instantly equalizes. Remember, the pressure instantly equalizes. And you'll probably get sucked up in there, you know, if, if the chamber is big enough. Well, the question is, why didn't gravity keep the air in your room instead of going upstairs? And you're going to say, well, vacuum was stronger. Well, we all know this. It's easy. You know, vacuum is, will always win. Well, when you go outside, how is our atmosphere still here? Exactly. Because remember, it's the vacuum of space. And there's no valve or anything. It's just open. So when our atmosphere, you know, where is, where does our atmosphere end and space begin? You get to a certain point, no, scientists doesn't have no freaking idea. It's like, it gets to a certain point and then what, 600 miles out, it's just tiny little particles. And then you have pressure here and no pressure. You're literally defying thermodynamics. It's, it's, it's your law, not, not ours. Well, what, what happens there? No, no one's got an answer for it. So there you go. It's it's that's one of, that's one of the the big points I throw it because the the automatic answer when anyone whenever it's whenever they say okay how's our atmosphere still here your your immediate knee jerk response is going to be gravity. That's all anyone can ever say is gravity. It's like really the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room is keeping everything here. Not only that, but the gravity is also counteracting centrifugal force, which is you know the Earth rotating, uh, you know, spinning around its axis. Well, if you've ever been on a merry ground, you know that things get pulled to the side. So why do we have water on the North and South Pole? So if that's the case, why, aren't there, why isn't there this giant bulge of water around the center, like Saturn's rings, only made out of water? No one's talking about it. Well, because gravity's so strong. No, it's not. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. Those are, those are the questions. Uh, do you have any follow-up things? Any comments, suggestions? You want to see anything else? What else can I throw at you? I think we're just kind of wondering, like, um, kind of basic for us that we thought not know that we uh, learned in school. Mm -hmm. uh, like, where does lava come from, for example? <laughs> oh. No, it's good. That's 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 one of the things I actually catch grief for because I made a clue. Did you watch the Flat Earth Clues, by the way, or did you just watch the documentary? We just watched the documentary. Oh my God, you're killing me! <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, what? Then you got my number from my channel. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we got to <laughs> Why you, you that that hurts me? It hurts me here. And it, hurts me. <laughs> it hurts me. It's like you're killing me. It's like okay, there's 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 a channel called there's a thing in my I've got playlists. Although I've got subject matter playlists, I sent you the experiments playlist. Um, but there's a playlist called the Flat Earth Clues. I mean, the whole documentary was based off the clues. You might want to watch those. Yeah. So in one of the clues, I actually talk about um, the whole magma system. And basically I say, because people say, well, what about volcanoes and stuff? You're saying those are artificial too. It's like, yeah, why not? I mean, if you ever had a friend who has like a pet tarantula or a lizard in a, in a terrarium or something like, or a snake, nothing's left to chance, right? You know, the, the light's artificial, the heat, the bushes, everything's artificial. You're not going to leave anything natural like a, like a magma system. The magma system is completely mechanical in nature. Oh, oh in fact, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take a whole different thing because you'll see this in the clues. Which is, um, uh, how do you know what's down there, right? And, and, and the fine print, all scientists will tell you, it's like, we have no idea what's down there. Here's why. Uh, here's how I knew this, is because I was looking around. So if you believe it's a globe, then it is 4,000 miles to the center of the Earth, right? Or what's that, wherever that is in kilometers, 7,000 kilometers, something like that. So 4,000 miles to the center of the Earth. How do they know this? You know, the deepest hole, what's the deepest hole ever drilled? 
Is it 2,000 miles? Is it 1,000? 100? 10? It's 8 miles, which is 12 kilometers. That's the deepest hole ever drilled. The Russians and the Germans tried for years to get past the, the 12 kilometer barrier. Could not do it. Could not do it whatsoever. And yet we see these wonderful cutaway drawings of the earth. You've all seen them with red and orange and yellow and white. They, where, where the hell did that even come from? They just made it up. They literally just made it up. In fact, in the old, old books, they literally would say at the bottom, it's like, well, this is just an artist rendering. We have no idea what's going on down there. And then later they just took that away. Well, that's bad because kids is like, oh yeah, when they're nine, it's like, oh, look at that, a cutaway of the earth. And then when you're 18, it's like, oh, look, that cutaway of the earth. And then they show it also, but they'll show you the cutaway of like Jupiter and Neptune and Saturn. It's like, you, you didn't even land on some of these supposedly. How are you even giving us that? The, the science makes, in fact, you know what? I'll send you one more picture. You know, you'll, you'll like this one. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> this, um, sorry, I get, I get super pumped about this stuff. <laughs> no, one second i'll send you you'll like this because science is only right there's a saying i have and that is science is only right until the day that it isn't where are we going back up speech pics i will send you two pics this one and this one okay so I just sent you two pics. Science is only right until the day that it's not. Science makes huge statements and basically they've created their own religion, which is it's like, we're science. This is what we think. But they don't say this is what we think. This is what it is. And it's like, this is it. And then they can be proven completely wrong. The fish I sent you, perfect example of this. The coelacanth fish, an ugly fish with a whole bunch of extra flippers. Uh, is it flippers or fins? It's fins. I don't know what flippers would be like sea lions and sea, it doesn't matter. So extra fins, right? Mm -hmm. This thing was extinct for 70 million years, right? 70 million years. This thing extinct. Every scientist in the world, every single one that was tied to this field convinced, absolutely convinced. Oh yeah. There's the fossils. We've carbon dated it. It's 70 million years. It is dead. Well, then they caught one in a net off of Madagascar and then Mozambique, and then South Africa, and then so on, and so on, and so on. And then finally, National Geographic, in the photo there, did a special with them. They were swimming around with them. Well, how did science get it absolutely so 100% wrong? And that is because they made a massive assumption. They saw the fossil record and said, they based it, you know, no one looks at anyone else's work. They never would question. It's like, well, fossil records, gotta be. So if that's the case, it didn't matter. It didn't matter that they, they first found the fish in 1940, right? Because it could have been 1970. It could have been now. In fact, now it would have been worse. The reaction would have still been the same. In fact, the scientists didn't even believe it when the, you know, when they first caught the fish. It's like, no, you didn't. They were completely in denial about it. So when somebody comes to me and they say, you've heard of the Loch Ness Monster? You guys heard of this? Yeah, Loch yeah. Ness? All right. Loch Ness Monster. Are there plesiosaur dinosaurs swimming around the lakes in the UK? Well, no, why not? Well, because dinosaurs have been dead for at least 100 million years. Okay, you, you said that about that fish over there, right? <laughs> so is it really dead? You know, are they really not? Or you just haven't caught one yet because they're a little more wily, a little more elusive. They don't like people. Um, every, just in fact, there's a, there's a term you guys could look up sometime. I, I don't want to drag this out too much. Called uh, cryptozoology which is uh, basically every species that we thought was it, science, any, any weird r rare animal was always a myth. The giant panda was a myth. The giant anaconda was a myth. Uh, the giant squid, the, the really, really big ones, we still have never caught one. The only reason we even know they're there is because we weigh, you know, the, the sperm whales that went after them, we carve those things up and it's like, oh, wow, what the hell are they eating? That's the only reason we knew. And so, like, um, there was a um, look up something called the Billy Ape. It was a six foot tall chimpanzee uh, species, a whole species, these damn things down in the down in the jungles. But they were really good at hiding from humans. They hate people. They just run for the freaking hills. And why wouldn't they? <laughs> right. And these things, they hid for years and years. We literally did not discover them until 2015.
literally did not discover one until all of a sudden, you know, in a hut, you know, one of them died and some of the villagers drag it to the hut. And it's like, oh, we got to find these things. So don't, don't tell me. So when somebody says, oh yeah, you know, the Loch Ness monster, completely not real. It's like, oh, don't, I'm not, I'm not going to discount that. Not for a second. No, no way. No way. All right. What else? What else can I do for you? Uh, I was just thinking about, like, in the end of the documentary, there's yeah. a pro no, experiment that you did in the, the lake or in the river. The laser experiment, yeah. Could you explain why that kind of went a little bit off? Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> for, to, to be fair, Jaren is one of my friends, you know, the, the guy that who was, who was doing the experiment. We did not know at the time that Jaren never had line of sight to begin with. We, like everybody, everybody makes assumptions, and Jaren's experimental techniques were horrible. Where he basically went to Google Earth and went to a place that was not too far from his house. You know, he's up in the San Francisco area. He's like, oh, that place looks flat. <laughs> and he goes he goes up there and he takes the he, he didn't bother to check we didn't even know until months later where because he because so many people gave him grief after the movie that all of a sudden I see this live feed where he's driving there <clears throat> during the middle of the day and he's saying it's like oh wow look I, I there is no line of sight it's like you never checked to see it at all <laughs> you just went up there with a camera crew the first time the documentary team and you just you just shot it and he did not, he only do, he didn't do it just once. You didn't notice in the documentary. He did it twice. The first time he melted the laser because he had it. You can't leave lasers on entirely. He just melted the condenser. And then he bothered to get a member. By the time he had the, the team come up there the second time, they hated us. And they needed an end to their movie. And that was the perfect ending. And people say, would you have changed the ending? Uh, if I had the power to do it because I didn't make the movie. Uh, eh, maybe and maybe not because I sat in the audiences and the audiences felt safe at the end. I mean, there's this sigh of relief. It's like, oh God, thank God the flat earthers are probably wrong. They're probably wrong. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. It's good. We're, we don't have to worry. It's not the matrix. And um, so, no, that's that's all that happened. Yeah. And we, and we in fact, we have, there's, and you can look through the, the link I sent you for the, uh, uh, the experiments playlist there's tons of play in fact the the first video that'll that'll do it for you it's only seven minutes long which shows it's long distance photography we didn't even need lasers we in fact we hardly even use lasers anymore we've spent so much money on lasers but whatever um because you can use mirrors by the way you can use mirrors during the daytime the lasers can only be used really at night but you can use mirrors on and just use the power of the sun it's brilliant it just cuts through everything but there's um, two oil rigs, one at seven miles, one at 10 miles in the video, in the, the first one, the experiments list. And when you're looking at it, you realize after a while, you know, well, I narrate it, that the problem is not only is the curvature not in front of these oil rigs, but the horizon is far, far, far behind it. Well, there isn't an optical effect in the world that'll do that. So, and that's just one experiment. We have, we have tons. So, um, anything else? I you're all, you're awfully quiet up you up I, you know i because by the way i'm i'm only seeing you guys because you're you're the ones that are running it yeah <laughs> you're, i know you're up there i didn't think my oh. microphone is on all right it is on. It is on. Yeah. It works. all right all right all right can you hear me now yeah. we can hear it now we yeah. can hear oh, you yeah, yeah. it doesn't come up that like my microphone is on like, i don't know it works. all right no no i'm not come i'm just saying i didn't forget <laughs> about you no okay thank you no, I'll I'll send you a pic outside the airplane because I'm in Bosnia right now. Yeah. So I'll take a picture outside like the airplane. Do do, <laughs> but but before before you send it to me, watch the Neil Tyson video and and again I will probably if you do send me one I'll probably reply with a um with a video from 120 thousand feet. <laughs> it shot it was absolutely flat. Um the again it the, the the reason why the our biggest proof has always been long distance photography and they don't they do not talk about this in the documentary but i'll explain it to you really fast which is if you look off boats go off into the distance right and they go off and they go over the other side of the curve that's that's it and the curvature supposedly is eight inches per mile squared it's not supposed to freak you guys out it's eight inches per mile per mile which means that at 10 miles it's 10 times 10 which is 100 times 8, which is 800 inches. And it goes further and further. So at 50 miles, it's almost 1,700 feet. I'm not going to convert it to meters for you guys. You can do that on your own. 
and which means these objects should not be seen after after a certain point they should be on the other side of the curve they should be on the other side of the hill and that's what almost everybody started doing when i started putting stuff out there they they ran to the beaches with their hd cameras that's what's changed everything is hd technology because now boats that used to be gone which, where there was no camera technology to pull them back into frame now they can be so you can watch a boat go off of the distance it's gone you cannot see it anymore take your hd camera <laughs> there it is there's the boat it's like okay then you let it go off again crank it up a little more there it is the boat's still there it's like okay in fact the only the only reason why because people will say uh why can't you see um japan from california why can't you see europe from new york and why can't you see mount everest from everywhere right again it's something we don't tell people which is what you're breathing in right now this all this stuff around here is only 99 percent transparent I mean, remember, what are you breathing in right now? What are you breathing into your lungs right now? Air. Air, which is made up of... Oxygen. Come on. Oxygen. The Good. Why... The what? This is the reason why I would go at economical school. No, 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 it's fine. No, it's, no, no, don't, no. There's, there's no, there, you don't have to be embarrassed in any way, shape, or form. Most people don't know. Hell, I had to look it up the first time I, I thought about it. <laughs> which was you're only breathing in 20% oxygen. Most of what we're breathing in right now is nitrogen. It's mostly nitrogen, which is why uh, like um, uh, scuba divers have two tanks. One is for, um, or special one tank, you know, one is for nitrogen, one is for oxygen. And which means it gets thicker over distance. You're basically breathing in basically a thin version of water. Let's take out the, the, the humidity out of it. You're basically, it's basically a soup. Well, that soup gets thicker and thicker and thicker over time to where even with your best cameras, you can't see more than maybe 150 miles at sea level, which you shouldn't be able to see anyway. And so, which is why it's like, look, if you took the atmosphere out, you should, you will be able to see a very, very, very long way, but then you'd be dead. So that's probably not good. Anyway, what else? Anything? Um, uh, so just to kind of like make it clear, you believe kind of that the earth is a globe like this like a dome around yep. it and yep. that the antarctica goes around the whole edge kind of yep yeah okay. yep, yep yep and you can and you can find this these um i mean i can send you images if you want for your project yeah. uh i can i can zip up something for you and, and shoot it to you in a link but you could also just literally type in flat earth into any search engine and just click on images you'll see just a flood of them yeah. There's tons of them, tons and tons of them out there. But yes, absolutely, that's what I believe. Yeah, so theoretically, if you were to walk to the edge of the earth, you could touch the wall, kind of? <laughs> if, if, you could get, if you could get that far, sure. But remember, by the... T okay, first, if, if... Yeah, and people have suggested this. It's like, why don't, you, why don't you try for it? It's like, okay, from the beginning of the Antarctic coastline to wherever this edge is... Well, you're not going to be walking there. You're, you're going to need a plane. The plane would have to bypass the entire GPS system because the GPS system, by the way, is American military. You know, you use it on your phones, and it's it's all us. <laughs> it's our military system. The, the back hell, the the entire internet is the backbone of the United States military system. God help us if this place goes down because you guys are going to be in trouble. <laughs> so, um, but also. Yeah, if you got out far enough, you might be able to run into whatever the edge is. I th do I think it's a wall? Yeah. You say, what's the wall made out of? I don't know. High frequency, force field, heavy element, heavy water. Uh, take your pick. Whatever it is, though, we tried to bust through it for four years straight. The United States and Soviet Union. We hit, and that's what guys do, by the way. You know, it's like, hey, look, it's a wall. Get the cannon. You know, <laughs> He's like, you know, so that's not working. What else you got? I mean, they were hitting this thing with everything they had for four years straight. And eventually they just gave up. It's like, ah, we're not going to get through it. So maybe there's another way. But uh, yeah, if you went out far enough. Yeah, if you went far enough in any direction, yeah, you'll be able to do it. But to, to, to go in any direction, again, you're going to have to find a pilot that will bypass the GPS system. Because, yeah, the GPS system tells you, like in your phones, where you are. But... In a sneaky way, if you're out far enough, it'll tell you where it wants you to go. So it's like, oh yeah, you're here. You're not really there. <laughs> oh, by the way, compasses don't work in Antarctica. That's awfully strange. Uh, you know, when you're um, at the North Pole, right? If you ever use a compass, I know you guys are too young. You know, back in the old days, we had compasses with magnets. 
<laughs> and there's a north and south pole, right? And 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 you're from the north like you are now. It always dominates north. Always do well when you go past the equator. Shouldn't it dominate south? Never ever does. I've talked to military guys. I've talked to people that have been in Antarctica. There's videos online. You can watch videos of people, kids asking questions of people in Antarctica. It's, what's a compass do? Nothing. It does nothing down there. Well, shouldn't it be like the south be just, you know, shouldn't it be burying the south needle? No. Well, why is that? It's a dual pole system. Never ever happens. It's it's stunning, absolutely stunning to me. Again, again, we we hide th some things but some things we don't hide and the reason is is because people we have media sanctions conspiracies and then we have a line in the sand and on the other side of that is outside of a lot of people's comfort zones mm -hmm. we only believe in in fact the media doesn't even like using the word conspiracy anymore not over here um we use the word scandal if it's involving a person and if people die it's called a um oh what's it called tragedy that's yeah, something else. I think it's tragedy. Scandal. Yeah. But they they hardly ever, ever use the word conspiracies. Well, look, we know full well. And I'm not talking, I'm not a tin hat guy. But come on, we know full well. There's conspiracies all the time. In politics and business and sports and entertainment, journalism, and yes, even science. You know, scientists need expensive cars too. You know, they'll take the money and, and, and do that. And then there are other conspiracies out there that we just don't talk about. And this is the biggest one I can think of. Anything else? I don't have any questions. I feel like I've asked a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just thinking about, well, this doesn't have to do with like the earth, but Ask. one like moon uh, conspiracy theories, like is the moon real? Was the moon landing real? Do you like have any information about it? You, you, okay. You, you, that photograph I, I sent you. Yeah. Does that look real in the slightest? <laughs> now, now that I've <laughs> laid that stuff out for you? No. So if you're going to fake it, because so, people are saying, okay, you don't have to fake everything when it comes to NASA. It's like, oh yeah, you do. It's crime 101, which is if you're going to fake one thing, you're going to fake it all. Because you're gonna, if you get caught, you're going to get punished no matter what. So you might as well just keep faking it. I've literally had people say, okay, the moon mission, absolutely fake. But you can't tell me the, the ISS is fake. It's like, why, why wouldn't that be fake too? Why would you make any of it real? Why? I mean, you know, it's pennies on the dollar and, and you save that money for something else like secret bases and stuff like that. No, the, the moon missions are utterly, utterly fake. Um, and they did it for a very simple reason, which was you have to keep people, you, you can't, you gotta remember what the Americans did. We went six times in a row, really, really fast with no problems whatsoever. And then in 1972, we shut the whole thing down. And we said, well, people are getting bored with this. You know, no, there's no real interest in it anymore. So we're just going to close it down. Good night, everybody. And that was it. They just closed it. And, and that was in 1972. No country ever decided to go there besides the United States. Remember, there was a space race, right? United States, Soviet Union. What, what happened on the other side of it? Never, ever happened. In fact, it was the exact opposite of what was supposed to have. We put two people, they would put three people. We put a small base and they made a bigger base. And the next thing you know, Time Magazine runs an article, has the Cold War reached the moon? That's what was supposed to happen. And it was the exact opposite. Really? The Russians just said, we quit. <laughs> and that is it. They just packed it in. And, and all the other space, there's supposedly six agencies out there with launch capabilities. Nobody decided to go to the moon. For, we take people to the moon. We're talking uh, India, Europe, uh, Japan, Russia, us, uh, China. And n n none of those supposedly went to the moon for any reason. That The Americans, that was it. You're going to give them. China supposedly has had a rover on the moon for three years. And what, it's never going to go over to the American base? <laughs> Knock over the American flag? Oh my God, that would be the greatest story ever. <laughs> <laughs> never, never ever happened no no the moon missions are terrible uh they I, I, but what pissed me off more i think was that was spacex because spacex just they did it on the cheap oh my god their stuff was was a, it was it was high tech but they left out so many things and i mean you gotta remember the elon musk and i i in fact in my my book that i wrote last year i went off on a freaking jag on on elon musk he has never done anything that he ever said he was going to do ever 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 remember i remember i was sitting in canada in 2017 he said oh yeah we're going to take two people uh, around the moon on a tourist run mm -hmm. right in 2018 and i'm going 
that's only like 11 months from now. How are you going to, how, how in the world are you going to pull that off? Never, ever happened. And then I started looking into his background. He's never done anything ever. Why, why did it never happen? There was something called a Google X Prize. Look that up. Where five companies, different companies in the world were supposed to launch and land. The winner, whoever gets on the moon first and, and beams back any images back to Earth gets $20 million. They all, they, none of them ever even got close. Why? It's nobody, nobody wants to talk about it. In fact, I got into an argument with a girl in Ireland where it's a question I ask people. I say, the heavy, heavy science people. And I say, okay, you, I go, when are you going back to the moon? Right? I go, we haven't been back since 1972. When are you going back to the moon? And they, the answer is always the same. Soon. We're going back soon. It's like, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that since Ronald Reagan was president. <laughs> I've heard that. We've gone through president. They, in fact, we have this montage. Every president says, we're committed to going back to the moon. Nobody even starts it. They all just, you know, do their term and it's the end. Next guy comes in. It's like, we're going to go back. Well, it's been 50 years. Nobody's doing anything. They, you, you'll see the stories every once in a while. Americans say they're going back. Yeah. Nope. 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 It's really interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. I've also read about the Mars One project. Oh, freaking oh, Mars. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, Mars. First off, the Mars rover. <laughs> then supposedly, okay, the Mars rover runs on basically a giant automotive battery. Car batteries, you haven't even lived long enough to probably have a battery die on you. They have an expiration date, like all batteries, like, you know, like Duracell batteries. You know, they, they have an expiration date on the side. Car batteries are the same way, absolutely the same way. Once they reach their expiration date, they're dead, 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 dead. Never going to come back. You, your car, you will have to get a new battery before your car runs. The Mars rover, supposedly, that battery died. And then four or five years later, after it died, it was like, oh, we got a signal again. Uh, it's working again. And they're driving it around. It's like, what are you talking about? You don't have that sort of technology. And you're beaming HD images back from this thing? With what? With what? You don't even have one of those dishes that supposedly was on the moon. You got the, a dish that's like this big. It's like, no, 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 no. The Mars, ro the Mars rover is a piece of crap. Any movies that talk about Mars are a piece of crap. And uh, what was the other thing about Mars? Oh, yeah. By the way, anyone that talks about going, even if you could get there, right? Let's say it's real. It is an utter one-way trip. Literally a one-way trip. Even if it wasn't real, there is no technology. You will use up all your fuel. You will get there. Your capsule will land. And it'll be like, oh, that's it. <laughs> You're done. And then people are saying, oh, we'll make fuel on Mars. We'll build a base. It's like, no. No, it's a one-way it's a one-way trip even if you could get there so anyone that's talking about mars and over here it's called the um the orion project uh by the way the orion project really great one uh they made when they were trying to even thinking about testing their capsules for the orion project they made this video called you can look it up it's easy to find called orion trial by fire which was made at the end of 2014 where they said oh yeah we can't test manned capsules for the orion project because we haven't solved the van allen radiation belt problem well, what are you talking about? You solved it in, in the '60s when you when you went to the moon and back multiple trips, Multi multiple trips. You, you, nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody even got cancer. So five of these guys limping around today. Five of these guys. Everybody died of natural causes. What what radiation problem? No one will talk about. It. There's only there's only three things that can stop radiation: gold, lead, and a whole bunch of water. We use none of those things in our spacecraft. We use aluminum and plastic, which stops nothing. <laughs> I, so I was, you know what? I'm going to throw one more thing at you guys, which is uh, because you're because you're women. The ISS. I, I, this is relevant for you guys. The ISS. People say, well, the ISS is real. It's like, no, no, it's absolutely fake. The interior shots, especially people just running around in their polo shirts and their khakis with socks. Why are they not wearing shoes? But the women. You can look this up. Type in like something on YouTube called ISS hairspray. Because, you know, in, in zero gravity, your hair is going to be like a swimming pool, right? If you have long hair, that's why you have to wear, you know, hairnets and pools and stuff like that. Because your hair is going to float around. We've all seen this, right? So it floats around. In fact, if you, you use the, um, the, the anti-gravity simulators, which we, we use in airplanes, the hair floats around. But when they were the female astronauts, okay, first off, when you're in ISS, you shouldn't have hair at all. You should be absolutely shaved because the filter system will completely, again, like a swimming pool, would just jam up. And yet they permed all their hair. 
they 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 used huge amounts of hairspray and had them to like sticking straight up or straight <laughs> out and they were absolutely rigid and it's like how has nobody seen this? It's like, it's like it, it, I, most granted, there there aren't that many women that are into conspiracies, but, and they wouldn't have seen it. But the ones I showed it to, it's like, oh yeah, that's horrible. It's completely permed. It, it, it's like the people they hired to do the interior shots of the space station were, you know, Hollywood rejects. Anyway, <laughs> I have a question. No, I don't think so. What? <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, did you know, uh, or did you personally knew uh, Mike Hughes, the person that died from making his own spaceship? Or oh God, yes, yeah, 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 Mad Mike Hughes. Yeah, he was suing me. Yeah, yeah oh. he. Um... Oh, Mad Mike. What do I want to say about Mad Mike? He was. Uh... Well, he was a stunt man, and he really didn't play well with others and so what he did was he launched the rocket a couple times and remember this is a homemade rocket and then he signed a deal with i think it was the science channel one of the networks here and they built him sort of built him a new rocket <laughs> and the first one oh my god the parachute remember it's a parachute system it's not even a fuel rocket it's a steam powered rocket right it's not even it, the 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 thing launches and the parachute just falls off and it basically just turned into a missile went off in the distance like well that's it for you i guess <laughs> it was awful I, but but i had no I, I look i had no love for the guy at, at all he was just an ass all he cared about was girls and money and fame that's all he cared about um and so and he was late to the game and, and let's let's put it this way the only reason he was into flat earth he he used to build rockets and do stuntmen and stuff like that before but he um he wasn't getting that much attention however he came to us and said hey can you give us eight thousand dollar give me eight thousand dollars to uh, help me finish this rocket and it's like yeah yeah sure sure well you know his first the first one that was flat earth it's like yeah we'll give you the money but you got to put a big flat earth sticker on the side oh the media just love that it's like a stunt man with a rocket and he's a flat earther and he wasn't even he wasn't even into flat earth at all he knew nothing about flat earth and so over time he had to learn because that's all the any of the reporters want to talk to him about and so by the time you know he got this deal i felt bad and everybody knew it in fact uh, here's a, a little bit of trivia for you the documentary people were going to use him he was he was supposed to be in that documentary however they had a funny feeling they go because they, they said okay what happens if we you know if, if we get him in the documentary and he dies do we have to pull it do we have to pull all that footage out and they're going oh man that's going to ruin the whole tone of the movie if, if we you know we don't want to leave that in there and so the last minute they said yeah we're not gonna we're, we're not gonna they so they didn't shoot him at all and they were right by the, by the end because who knew who knows what was going to happen after that so yes i absolutely did know him <laughs> do we have any more questions um, do you have any questions Isla? um i did think of one but i can't remember it uh, gravity meteors sun and moon time zones <laughs> um <laughs> oh yeah uh, right do you have any kind of like i wouldn't say celebrities but like people that are well known that have come to you and said i do believe in flat earth but i don't yeah yeah okay i'll give you this one and then i'll then i'll run because it's actually it's 12 20 here um okay so i will give you so you guys already know about in fact there's a there's a great you know what there's a playlist on my channel i'll send it to you real fast but i'll give you a, a i'll give you an exclusive as well so there's a playlist hang on here there's a playlist called mainstream media where are we media okay i'll send you the media playlist there's tons of guys that are in this but call this uh mainstream playlist I wonder if I have. Are you guys into tennis? No, no, no. Not really. <laughs> oh, all right. So you don't. So like, 
Um, like the number one uh, tennis player in the world, uh, Novak Djokovic. Um, the Serbian. <laughs> the what? He is name from Serbia or I think Bosnia? so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's into us. I sent you the playlist of, of some of the mainstream media stuff that's covered. But I'll I'll tell you one I'll tell you one that uh, that I liked. Uh, here's a here's a good story to end on. So I was out shooting a thing with um, National Geographic out in Los Angeles. And uh, the woman that was in the documentary, Patricia, she we, we were at this restaurant with a bunch of people and she was taking a picture of her vegan salad and posting it on Facebook because that's what people do. <laughs> Oh, I swear to God. And, but I, I couldn't give her crap because the second she did, it's like, oh, here's the restaurant. Somebody tagged her and said, oh, you're at this restaurant. We're only 10 minutes away at my brother-in-law's house, his cabin. He's got a weekend house in, in Palm Springs outside of Los Angeles. And I said, oh, really? And, and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, we're kind of busy. We don't want to go. You know, we, 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 we haven't even eaten dessert yet. And it's like, well, my, um, uh, my my brother-in-law is uh, Kelsey Grammer, and he wants to meet you. Now, you guys probably... I don't know if you know who Kelsey Grammer is. No. All right. Uh, look him up if you get a chance. You probably recognize the face. Um, he did in America. He's a big TV star over here. Super, super huge TV star. Did movies and television. And he went... He We went up to his house, and it's like, oh, my God. You know, your classic Hollywood thing in the hills. And he was saying, um, he said, hey, do you want to know how I found out about it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he goes, um, uh, Amy Adams told me at the Oscars this year. Oh. I go, really? And I go, well, how's that working? He goes, he goes, tons of people know about this. He goes, we were, we were at this Oscar party and everyone was drinking, talking about conspiracies and whispers. <laughs> and then Amy Adams comes in, you know, Academy Award winner. And she says, no, 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 no. She goes, you can put all that BS to bed. Let me tell you what my father's into. And she goes on this jag about how much she hates flat earth. And what people don't, don't know is producers tell me this all the time. It doesn't matter whether you love a topic or you hate a topic as long as you're engaged in the topic. Because sometimes people don't care if you love a topic. You know, it's like, you know, if Amy would have been like, oh, flat earth's great and all that, people like, whatever. But she was going, oh, I hate it so much. It's like, what's gotten into her? I click, 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 click. You know, they're trying to figure out what it was all about. And he was saying that tons of people that know about Flat Earth, but not that 90% of our mem membership is in the closet because they're afraid of what might happen to them. A uh, perfect example would have been Kyrie Irving, uh, the basketball star over here. Uh, he's in one of my trailers, by the way. Watch the trailer to my channel, my actual channel. <laughs> Uh, which it's, you know, Kyrie Irving won a, you know, won his championship, best friend with LeBron James. He's 25 years old, had his own shoe line from Nike. It's like, ah, what have I got to lose? And he goes on this podcast and, and says, just before the All-Star game, and says, oh, yeah, flat earth, that's where it's at. And goes on this thing. And he thinks, well, what's the worst that could happen? Well, you don't understand that the media has access to you as an athlete all the time. They can go to the locker room all the time and they have a hundred games a year for the NBA. And so they just kept badgering about it, badgering about it. And that scares a lot of celebrities. You don't want to be labeled something that is negative, but there's a whole bunch of people that are, that are out there talking about it. And uh, again, you'll see in some of them, some of the media list, it's, it's a weird group. The people that come out in the, in the, in the media world, the famous people, they don't have a lot to lose. You know, you, you won't see it. Well, Brad, you know, will any a huge A-list movie star come out about it? Eh, probably not because their contract says, you know, you don't do anything. There's something called a, um, a good behavior clause in most entertainers' contracts, which is like, don't shoot anybody. <laughs> don't drink and drive. Uh, don't see anything, you know, super, super controversial. And that's one of those things. It's, it's on the edge. So there you go. Thank you so much. Lastly, could we ask if, <laughs> if we could, because we're recording the screen, could we have like the handshake thingy? Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Just because it's fun with the. <laughs> How's that? Great. Great. Oh, thank, you so thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's again, if you guys need any resources, uh, you know, I'll send you. Maybe, maybe I'll do it tonight. Maybe I won't. Well, I'm, I'm amped up. I'll do it tonight. Yeah. 
um, I'll send you I'll send you a list of um, some of the images I use for my slideshow, and you can do whatever. But again, look through some of the playlists. Yeah, we will. In the channel, there's tons and tons of stuff out there. And remember, we've been doing this now for five years. Yeah. So only this year has it gotten weird, you yeah. know. And and now nobody's not doing anything. But but up until now, everything was great. So. Yeah. All right. Really? All right. Well, have have fun with your project. Yeah, you and uh, if if the uh, instructor wants to uh, uh, wants any clarification or if they want me to talk about anything, I'm more than happy to do it. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Okay. You guys have a great morning. I'm gonna go to bed here in a sec. And, uh, we'll uh, you know maybe correspond soon. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. All right. See you guys. Bye. <laughs> oh, oh my god, it's bad! Hello, I'm falling on that. Okay, wait, you can stop for a second. Call me not a bomb! I'm awesome, fat girl. That was dirty. Hello, I'm a fat artist! I'm a dirty girl.